Come today to shop your best selection of Royals tickets and parking passes. At Tickets for Less, you never pay per ticket fees. Plus, you save big when you use my special promo code MJ1 on your next order. That's right. Just enter promo code MJ1 at checkout at ticketsforless.com and save today. Looking for that perfect gift for that hard-to-shop-for friend or family member? Do what I do. Send the gift of competition, Kansas City Barbecue, and let Joe's Kansas City deliver the gift that will stand out from all the rest. I'm talking about Joe's ribs, burn ends, and even the famous Z-Man can all be sent anywhere in the United States. Choose from their pre-selected kits or go ahead and build your own. Then let Joe's handle the rest. Check out all their smoked meats, wonderful side dishes, and even desserts. They're online right now at joeskc.com. That's joeskc.com. What's up, Kansas City? This is Jack Johnson. You work hard to make sure your family has everything they need. Life insurance for American Family can help financially protect your loved ones by replacing a portion of your income if you were to pass away. That means your family will have the help they need to maintain their quality of life and pursue their dreams. Get the peace of mind you deserve by protecting what matters most. Contact Kim Howard and her team today at 913-649-2002. That's 913-649-2002. From a quote on your home and auto insurance today. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, SI and its operating companies, American Family Life Insurance Company, 6 thousand american parkway madison wisconsin sporting kc fans it's time sporting kansas city soccer on the exclusive home of sporting Sports Radio 810 WHB. And now, the new voice of Sporting Kansas City, Ali Trost Martin. And in fact, filling in for the new voice of Sporting Kansas City, Ali Trost Martin, it's an old voice. Nate Bucati joining you today as we get ready for soccer between Sporting Kansas City and Real Salt Lake. We are here at Children's Mercy Park just in time for our national anthem. Here to perform the national anthem of the United States of America, please welcome Marianne Michaels. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud And bright stars through the pale star, or the ramparts we watch, where some cannons we see. Just about set for kickoff in what has been traditionally a fantastic Western Conference rivalry in Major League Soccer. Sporting Kansas City and Real Salt Lake on a hot, humid, as is typical for this time of year in the Midwest, evening at Children's Mercy Park in Kansas City, Kansas. Hello, everybody. Once again, this is Nate Bucati along with Jacob Peterson. It's great to be back in the booth with you, Jacob. And this should be a very good contest. Sporting Kansas City, they're rounding into form as the season has gone on, but results are at a premium right now for them as they try to work their way back into the playoff picture on things against the Real Salt Lakeside that have six wins away from home this year, the most of any team in Major League Soccer. Yeah, first off, Nate, it is great to have you back here. And great that you haven't forgot about us little people here as you've moved on to bigger and better things but you nailed it this is a a tricky game for sporting tonight coming off of short rest 
down in Houston with the temperatures down there. And, and you said it is scorching out today. It, it is so hot here. Of course, Salt Lake, as we'll get into, heavily rotated this lineup. But they have done really well when Pablo Mastroni has chosen to rotate his team in the past this season. This is a very big game, though, for Sporting. You have to win your home games. Sporting have to win their remaining home games to make it into the playoffs. And it's got to start tonight. And this is going to be a really entertaining match here. 5-5-1 five, five, and one at home so far this season for Sporting Kansas City. Not a good enough home record. And they know that for what has been a fortress since its construction here in Kansas City, Kansas. As Jacob mentioned, a heavily rotated roster for Pablo Mastroeni and the RSL side. Not the same story for Sporting KC. Only one change from the side that played to a 2-2 draw against the Houston Dynamo over the weekend. Kendall McIntosh will start back in goal. It is the 4-3-3 formation that we're used to seeing from Sporting KC. The back line from right to left, Jake Davis, Danny Rosero, Andreu Fontas, and Tim Leibold. The holding midfielder is Nemanja Radoya. He's the one change. He was not in the starting lineup. He played the second half against Vancouver a couple of games ago, did not play against Houston. Remy Voltaire and Eric Tommy are the attacking midfielders. And then the uh, forward trio of Johnny Russell, Alan Polito, who is in scorching hot form, and Daniel Shallowy from right to left. Meanwhile, eight changes for Pablo Mastro. Any side, they're going to play a 4-4-2 formation with Gavin Beavers making the start and goal. We'll give you the rest of the starting lineup for them in just a moment as Rubiel Vasquez, our referee, dressed in highlight color pink as the referee gives the starting orders, and we are underway. RSL in possession first. They will go from left to right, attacking the south stand here at Children's Mercy Park, dressed in yellow from head to toe. Their secondary kit, Sporting KC, in the indigo blue from head to toe. And if you believe in things like this actually mattering, Sporting Kansas City 0-3-2 and in the all Navy blue or indigo blue, as they call it. So we'll see if they can buck that trend here today. Meanwhile, that back line for RSL, Amika Anili playing in the on the right-hand side, Justin Glad and Marcella Silva, the center back pairing, with Andrew Brody starting at left back. Changes in the midfield. Nelson Palacio, a new signing for RSL, came in in late June making his RSL debut today along with Jasper Loffelson in the midfield. Andres Gomez and Brian Oviedo, the outside midfielders, as Daniel Shallowy serves a dangerous cross in that's knotted behind in Sporting Kansas City. We'll have a corner just to round out that starting lineup for RSL. The captain, Demir Krylock, the 34-year-old longtime RSL player, along with Danny Musovsky. Johnny Russell into the penalty area, try to cut one back, and it's tackled away, and it bounces out as far as Andres Gomez. Eric Tommy ushering him toward the byline where he runs into Jake Davis, but does a nice job of holding up possession for Real Salt Lake. Jacob mentioned 88 degrees today. That might not sound like it's that hot, but it's the humidity that goes on top of it. We're looking at a 40% chance of thunderstorms here tonight. We'll keep our fingers crossed that there's nothing to delay the start or the, the, the continuation of this game here today. We do know there will be a hydration break in the 30th minute. But Jacob Peterson, as we look at the way this game unfolds, what do you want to see from Sporting Kansas City in the opening moments of tonight's match? Well, I think we saw a little glimpse there early on. Sporting have to play in the attacking half. Even though Sporting, the last game against Vancouver, were very good, ended up running away with that game, the first 20 minutes, 15 minutes were slow for Sporting. Have to be on the front foot, have to play in Salt Lake's half of the field. And and you mentioned all those rotations and, and... just what Pablo Mastroni is doing with this team, but he's done an excellent job. And this is not those same type of RSL teams as we've seen maybe the past couple of years where they're kind of overachieving. They've got some players. They, they've got some really good talent with the new ownership group has gone out, acquired players. Their bench is absolutely stacked. 
But since May, Nate, these are the two top teams in the Western Conference. Salt Lake has 23 points, Sporting on 22 points. Both these teams in scorching hot form. The new owners for Real Salt Lake, David Blitzer and Ryan Smith, they have splashed the cash in ways we've never seen in Salt Lake City before for this RSL team. Even back in their winning days, it was more of a money ball approach, spending upwards of $16 million to bring in the players they brought in. Of course, highlighted by Chicho Arango, who came in and uh, scored in his debut for RSL over the weekend. He's on the bench today for Real Salt Lake, but they've certainly spent money. Of course, Sporting Kansas City can tell you about spending money on strikers. But when you have them, it makes a big difference. Alan Polito has scored nine goals in his last seven games for Sporting KC and all of a sudden finds himself in the golden boot race where he's in the top three in Major League Soccer with ten goals on the season. Here he is on the ball right now being forced to track backward and play it all the way back to Danny Rosero in the center circle for Sporting KC. Forward to Eric Tommy with a one-touch pass over to Jake Davis. Right back to Tommy. Who's looking to make a progressive pass, but instead they'll work it across the back line again. Sporting KC will no doubt embrace the conditions here, hoping, as RSL do with the altitude that they use to their advantage at home, Sporting will look to use the heat and humidity here today and And make RSL chase the ball around. Yep, that's exactly what I was going to say, Nate. It's so important, and we talked about it before. In the summer months in KC, you have to move the ball quick. Sporting are going to have possession. They want the ball. They have to be quick in those moments, circulate the ball side to side, make Salt Lake shift. Eventually, you're going to get tired in this weather. You hear the crowd applauding because of a good defensive action from Andre Fontas. Jake Davis had given the ball away, but Fontas, with a big step, able to win it back for Sporting. And now Radoya plays it forward to Eric Tommy. And out right-hand side to Johnny Russell with the bright orange boots down the right-hand side. He gets the overlap from Jake Davis, who mishandles the pass from Johnny Russell and slaps the ground in frustration as young Jake Davis will have to retreat defensively after conceding the throw-in for Real Salt Lake. Five and a half minutes in, we're scoreless. Bit of a feeling out period from both sides. Sporting will try to pin RSL in on the throw-in here. Masovsky earns a foul on Rosero as he's clutching at the back of his head and he goes down. The Sporting's next home match is Monday, July 31st, the first home match in the inaugural League's Cup 2023, a World Cup-style interleague tournament featuring every team from both Major League Soccer and Liga MX. Sporting is set to face off against Liga MX powerhouse Chivas Guadalajara on July 31st at 9 p.m. here at Children's Mercy Park. This is one match you don't want to miss. Get your tickets now at sportingkc.com slash tickets. A, a former Chivas man, Alan Polito on the ball right now. That's going to be a big storyline for that game, certainly. Alan Polito going up against Chivas. What a matchup that is going to be here. That League's Cup's going to be certainly very enticing. First of its kind format. But here we are in MLS play. Fontas chipping it over the top looking for shallowy. But Marcelo Silva chests it down to Justin Glad who then plays it forward to Palacio the newcomer. Up the field it goes to Krylock. He goes to ground. Doesn't get the foul. Beg your pardon. That's Aviedo who was taken down but Sporting went it back. Fontas up the left-hand side, Libel with a nice first touch to carry him up the line. Now back to Polito, who's had to check into the midfield for his service so far today. He picks out Radoya, one-touch pass forward to Voltaire, and his quick pass back to Fontas makes him retreat back toward the nearby line. It's perfectly fine if Alan Polito checks back. Yes, you see the goals, and you talk about how good he has been recently but it's also this this playmaking ability as he pops off that back line and Daniel Shallowy takes his place up in that center forward spot. Libel driving centrally, puts a pass right into the chest of Voltaire, who did well to deal with it, swims around a defender, and he gets called for the foul. Now you can hear the reaction from the fans here at Children's Mercy Park. It was Andres Gomez who went to ground as Voltaire, boy, that was... It's not a foul. It's not a foul. It was a soft one, and RSL 
<laughs> Look come the other way. Being diplomatic there. You, you are. Jacob. You are. Remy Voltaire did a good job, really. Yeah. There was a little contact, but he, it's almost a little swim move to get to the other side. He would have been in on goal or at least in a good spot to serve that one across the box. Now we mentioned the heavy rotation for Pablo Mastroeni's side, who come in in fourth place in the Western Conference on 33 points, Sporting Kansas City in 10th on 25 points. And what will win out here, the fresh legs of RSL or the experience and veteran leadership for Sporting KC? Don't forget there's a, a heavily stacked bench for Mastroeni in the second half. And speaking with Eric Tommy before the game for the Compass Minerals core questions, he told me the team that scores first will win this game. And we'll see if Sporting Kansas City can, in fact, draw first blood here. Nine minutes in, and we're scoreless. Sporting majority of possession so far. They've been patient with it. Fontas tries an ambitious pass forward this time, which is intercepted by Anelli. And here come RSL the other way. Krylak trying to play it forward to Loffelson, but it's intercepted with a physical tackle by Rosero. He has really bought some fight to that back line for Sporting KC here. And it's Jake Davis up the right-hand side, sending Johnny Russell through. He gets a tuss pass, one defender, and Justin Glad comes over to cut him off at the pass, and it ends up deflecting off of Johnny Russell for a goal kick. Disagreements from the supporter section who are right in front of it here at Children's Mercy Park. Oh, but what a play from Justin Glad. The moment there you thought Johnny Russell was going to get on the end of that. Oh, I think it might have... The Might have come back off of Justin Glad, but was he in bounds when that happened? Yeah, I think he was. Uh, I think he was. I think he, referee missed that one. But either way, what a play from Justin Glad, who I think he's been excellent for RSL. He's really come a long way. I mean, it's, it's crazy to think that he's only 26 years old, and he <laughs> has so much experience. I but, was just going to say that, Jacob. When I had was going through my spotting boards, I had to do a double take when I saw that he was only 26. Ninth year in the league. And he's getting better each year, too. And I think that's a testament to Pablo Messeroni and the staff there, but also Justin Glad himself and the way that he can play. He's a good passer out of the back, but he's so good in his ground duels, in those loose ball regain areas, and the reasons why he's turning into one of the best center backs in the league. He also is a, a weapon on set pieces. He scored two goals in his last three games, Justin Glad. He said going into the season, five goals was his his, uh, his goal. He's already got four of them. RSL with a throw in in Sporting Kansas City territory. It goes to Crylock, but he was muscled off the ball by Radoya. Remy Voltaire able to help it on to Radoya, who fires it forward. It's brought down out of the air by John by uh, Daniel Shallowy on the near side. And back to Leibold as RSL pressing forward here. Leibold all the way back to the goalkeeper, Kendall McIntosh, who's making his 12th start on the season in place of the injured Tim Melia. Sporting do well to deal with the pressure initially from RSL, who now drop back to set their line of confrontation up more towards the midfield. And Fontas just tiptoeing forward with it. Now he's going to look to stretch the defense, going over the top to Shallowy, who's working against Anelli. Anelli this time wins out and then goes to ground under the challenge from Shallowy and picks up the foul call. It's well done from Anelli. Actually liked that ball from Andreu Fontas. Everything was in front of Salt Lake. It was easy for the back line. Good run from Shallowy. Ellie, rookie, he's done a really good job. It's going to be a tough matchup, though, going against Daniel Shallowy. Sporting fans know. You isolate him 1v1. Very dangerous player in the attacking third. Polito on the halfway line once again, checking back to the ball for Sporting KC. And Jacob, as you mentioned, not only is he so good with that play, he knows when to pop up in the right place. He's good back heel flick from Johnny Russell to try to put Tommy down the right-hand side. But Marcelo Silva, the 34-year-old center back, comes flying over with a slide tackle to put it into touch. And it's back in by Sporting KC. They quickly reverse it to the near side where Leibold brings it down. 
Sporting KC with both fullbacks up the pitch looking to use the width in the attack right now. Fontas back across to Rosero. And over to Jake Davis on the right-hand side now. Tommy checking to the ball. Stops, pivots on it, turns past one defender, shoots it back to Fontas. Fontas driving forward, plays a pass to Polito. And now over to Remy Voltaire. Left-hand side right on the touchline to Leibold. Now Polito. Redoya. Fontas. Back to Voltaire. Quick one and two touch passing from Sporting KC as they probe for a soft spot in this organized RSL defense right now. Back to the halfway line and Rosero. He drives a pass into Johnny Russell. His first touch flicked it up in the air and Silva heads it away. And RSL come away with it. Forward pass to Krylock. He side foots it out to the left hand side to Brody who brings it across the halfway line. Johnny Russell trying to close him down and forces an errant pass from Brody. That's corralled by Rosero. And again, Sporting Kansas City reclaiming the ball quickly here. Polito again back into the midfield. Plays it to Russell and Sporting KC. Will calm things down once again to touch it around. Here's Polito calling for it. Just rarely a bad touch from Polito when he receives those balls in the midfield. But it was a poor pass forward to Tommy this time. Intercepted by Brody and RSL in possession. Into the 15th minute, still scoreless between Sporting and RSL. Not much in terms of attacking action so far from either side. Young goalkeeper Gavin Beavers, the 18-year-old, sends it down the field where it's calmly chested down by the Colombian Danny Rosero. Leibold up the left-hand side. Picks out Shallowy. Back through for Leibold. Can he get there? He does. He puts it all the way across the penalty area where it's brought down by Johnny Russell. Russell with two defenders in front of him, trying to decide what to do with it, now runs out of steam and plays it back to Radoya. The offside flag has come up against Sporting Kansas City here on a delayed action. Right now, possession in favor of Sporting KC by 64% to 36%, but neither side has attempted a shot so far today. No, I think you were kind, Nate. You said not too much. The attacking, <laughs> there's been nothing. There, there right. really has been nothing. And if you're Salt Lake, perfectly okay with that. 64% of the ball, but not in any dangerous areas really to this point. No, and it's a catch-22. You you want to be aggressive. You want to put Salt Lake under. But with this heat, you also have to be smart with the ball. And, and as long as Sporting eventually are able to, to make some of this possession pay off, it's okay. But they've got to start to amp it up a little bit. And, and I'm even okay. That ball that Alan Polito tried to switch, play it over the top to Eric Tommy. No, he underhit it. I'm okay with those type of passes early on. Get Salt Lake to turn face their own goal because right now everything's in front of them it's pretty easy for them to defend sporting kansas city's one change got ikinda out of the starting lineup today he has been a really a, a, an, am, an amazing attacking presence creatively in the middle of the field for sporting kc he's not out there today here comes rsl driving forward up the left hand side into the penalty area it goes good defensive work from jake davis to break up the play from aviedo and it's touched out for a Sporting Kansas City throw-in. Jake Davis, 21 years old, his 14th start on the season. He made just three appearances last year with the first team, but has been pressed into duty injuries to Graham Zussi and Caden Pierre. I don't know how many people pictured him as a right back in his ascent through the system. He had played mostly in the middle of the pitch, but he has made that position his own so far this year, Jacob. He's been excellent. He really has. And, yes, there's a learning curve, and he's he's going to have some moments where, where he's not – it's just not a natural fit for him. But he's done an excellent job filling in there for KP and for Zeus. And, really, for me, Jake Davis deserves to keep that spot as of now. He's playing at, at a good level. It's good to see. Here he is on the ball right now, right on the halfway line. Plays it along the halfway line over to Fontas, forward to Shallow. He's got some space to pick up his head. He does so. Chips it into the penalty area, looking for 
Alan Polito, but it's overhit and out for a goal kick. Polito gives the thumbs up back to Daniel Shallowy for the idea, but the execution didn't come off. Nineteenth minute here at Children's Mercy Park. A bit of a feeling out process so far in this midweek game and you're hearing the fans grow a little restless, and you heard the whistle sound there from referee Rubiel Vasquez, who's telling young goalkeeper Gavin Beavers to get on with it. He took his time on a free kick after an offside moments ago, and this time after the goal kick. And so we'll see how lenient Gavin Beavers will find the referee as time goes on if he continues to press it there. This is a foul called against Andres Gomez. Closing down Tim Leibold deep in SKC territory. So Sporting will have a free kick They're right next to their own penalty area. And Fontas puts it back into play to Kendall McIntosh. Well, we've seen this from RSL for years and years and years coming into Children's Mercy Park. Jacob trying to slow the game down, maybe try to ugly it up a little bit. And that's certainly been a process that's worked for them from time to time here at Children's Mercy Park, and so far through the first 19 minutes, they have not conceded even so much as a half chance. Here's a good ball into Polito. Through to Shallowy, putting it across. It's cut out by Silva, but only as far as Polito. His sliding shot is blocked, but the offside flag has come up against Sporting once again. That's the best attacking action, though, from the home side so far tonight. Yeah, and really both attacking actions, Sporting's best two, have both been offside in the end. Get a look at the replay. It does look like Daniel Shallowy was just a half step in front of that back line, but Sporting needs some more of that. And it look, it is so easy for me to say that up here when I don't have to run and deal with that physical demand in these weather conditions, but you've got to run off the ball. You've got to make that run and at least test this Salt Lake back line a little bit more. And talk about Gavin Beavers and it's his fifth start as an 18-year-old. You want to put these young goalies under pressure. And so far, he has had to do very little with the exception of a few goal kicks. Masovsky receives the long kick, plays it left-hand side to Brody, who's making his way up the pitch. Back to Demir Krylock, about 30 yards from goal, and now all the way back toward the half line to Silva. This is one of the longest spells of possession from RSL so far in the game. Justin Glad will play it across once again to Silva, who's all by himself on the RSL half of the pitch. Now across to Justin Glad again. Now Sporting Kansas City starting to step forward defensively. And they'll turn it all the way back to that young goalkeeper, Gavin Beavers. He got some action earlier this year replacing Zach McMath, who had been suffering from a head injury on... May 27th, he made three straight starts after that. Here's a giveaway by RSL. The ball through for Polito. Beavers off his line to cover it. He wins the ball. Polito crashes to the ground, but it was well won by the young goalkeeper who immediately fires it up the left-hand side to Brody. Beavers trying to slide it through for Musovsky. It was broken up by Jake Davis, but does make its way to Musovsky. Now Oviedo actually make that uh, Brody on the ball. On the left-hand side, you've got Brody wearing number two and Oviedo number three. Overlapping quite a bit between the two of them. Now it's on the near side, Andres Gomez. Gomez running at libel, drives a ball in, easily dealt with by Fontas to Voltaire, then to Shallowy, who tried to send it up the field to Polito, but Polito had Justin Glad right on his back, and Glad wins the header for Real Salt Lake, who stay in possession in Sporting Kansas City's half. Go back to that play, Nate. Beavers, it's an excellent read coming off his line. It's one of the rare moments that Salt Lake had possession, but then gave it away, pass it right to Eric Tommy. It's actually a decent ball to try to find Alan Polito, who's running through, but young goalkeeper, quick off his line, big time. I think he'll get credited with a save, but a big time intervention from Gavin Beavers. And if he doesn't get it right, Alan Polito stepping up to the penalty spot again. 
a nice turn from Nelson Palacio. He got tripped up by Johnny Russell. He's on the ground in a little bit of pain, but the attacking action continues for RSL. It's Brody into the penalty area. He's turned back by Jake Davis to Oviedo. Edge of the penalty area. Tried to play it through to Brody. Jake Davis intervenes once again. Palacio, long-range effort, and it sends McIntosh into a sprawling two-handed save that goes behind for a corner. First shot attempt of the game goes to the visitors, and the newcomer, Nelson Palacio, who pulled the trigger from about 35, 40 yards away, and he really put McIntosh to the test. A lot of pace in that shot from Palacio. Relatively comfortable height for McIntosh in the end. It's a little bit unfortunate to give up a corner there, but that ball had a bunch of pace on it, so you can understand that. Salt Lake have been very good on set pieces, especially in their last game. Scored two off of set pieces. Oviedo to take the corner. Johnny Russell was the first man, and he heads it away. So not the greatest ball in from Oviedo. It goes back to Brody, who chips it to the near side for Oviedo. Johnny Russell and Gomez going for the same ball, and they both missed it. So he goes out for a Sporting KC throw-in. That right there is where you miss Ruiz for RSL. So good. Had both of those assists in RSL's last game at home. Had there. three of them, actually, which was a career high. Oviedo just under-hit that ball in the end. Well, you look at some of the players on the bench for this RSL side. Pablo Ruiz, who you mentioned. Chicho Arango as well. They have some firepower waiting in the wings if they can keep this game close, as they have done so far. We're at the 25th minute, now into the 26th. Still scoreless, Sporting Kansas City have yet to attempt a shot, and RSL seem to be growing into the game here as they've had their best run of possession over the last five minutes. Liebel with a nice step to take it away. Forward to Tommy, who plays it back to Voltaire. Now Johnny Russell, good counter press, though, from RSL. And it's taken back this time by Anelli. Loffelson plays it over to the left-hand side to Brody. A lot of space for Loffelson. And now across to Justin Glad. Long diagonal ball. Over to Brody on the left-hand side. Closed down by Jake Davis. So he plays it back to Loffelson. Justin Glad once again. Anelli near side. Johnny Russell has, for the time being, swapped flanks with... Daniel Shallowy, who's over on the right-hand side right now. A long diagonal to the far side. Brody with a nice ball down for Loffelson. He cuts it back. And a shot bangs off the post from RSL. Comes to the near side to Gomez. He serves it back in. And there's a header that's knocked down inside the penalty area. And as Remy Voltaire comes away with it, he's taken down by Oviedo. Boy, what a hit this was. Oviedo from just outside the penalty area. He had McIntosh beaten, but he put it right off the corner of the post and the crossbar. What a hit to Oviedo. Left-footed player on his right foot. And really, hey, that was a well-worked play from Salt Lake. Great switch of play. Good run from Loffelson out of the midfield. Sporting let this game get away from them a little bit. Have to get back on the ball, knock it around a little bit more. It's right there, just shows you a glimpse of dangerous Salt Lake team can be. So far, RSL with three shot attempts, one on target. Sporting have yet to attempt a shot in this game. 28th minute, though, it's still scoreless. It's almost exactly like the Vancouver game. Vancouver, the better team going forward early on in that game. Russell serving across in. 
Knocked away by Justin Glad, and then a foul on Remy Voltaire as he takes down Anelli. Well, World Cup watch parties are back in the soccer capital of America. Join us to cheer on the U.S. women's national team in the FIFA Women's World Cup 2023 at KC Live in the Kansas City Power and Light District this summer. Starting July 21st, tickets are free and required for entry. Learn more and redeem your tickets now at sportingkc.com slash WWC 2023. Become RSL again, this time an interception by Radoya just outside of the penalty area. And he did really well calmly to stay on the ball and not panic and finally plays it over to Jake Davis as Sporting are able to break the pressure. Now Rosero looking to send it up the left-hand side to Johnny Russell who chests it down and plays it back to Leibold. Now Voltaire. Now all the way back to Fontas. 30th minute will be coming up on a hydration break here. Most likely at the next stoppage. Tommy in the middle of the park to Polito. Now back to Radoya. Back to Tommy. He got closed down by Loffelson, taken away by RSL. Loffelson all the way back to Beavers. A bit of a sloppy first touch, but there was no pressure. But as he cleared up the field, it's taken by Radoya. Through to Johnny Russell into the penalty area. Russell on his left foot, clips it across. He finds Shallowy, who side puts it into the back of the net. Absolutely pinpoint service from Johnny Russell. And the Hungarian assassin, Daniel Shallowy, slots it home. And it's 1-0 Sporting Kansas City on their first shot attempt of the game. Right on the stroke of 30 minutes. And really, Nate, this is completely against the run of play. It all started with Kevin Beavers really shaky on the ball. Plays it out. Sporting win it. Had numbers high up the field. You can see Rajoya steps up. Plays a good ball to Johnny Russell. I thought the touch took him a little bit too far. Not wide, but a great ball in. Alan Polito knows that Chalouis behind him. Doesn't jump up for it. Chalouis on the back post. Still had a lot to do there. Great finish from Daniel Chalouis. Sporting KC on their first shot. Up 1-0 in the 31st minute. And that brings us right to the hydration break. In this game of soccer can be a funny one, Jacob Peterson, because we were talking about how RSL were the team growing into the game. They were looking the more dangerous side over the last 10 minutes or so, but all it takes is one mistake by the goalkeeper in the back, Sporting Kansas City, pounce on it, two passes later, that goalkeeper's picking it out of the back of his net, and it's a completely different game. There have been a few times in this game, not a lot, but a couple where Sporting have broken lines. And they haven't been good in those moments. They've either the pass was a little bit too far or they decided to recycle the ball and bring it back around. Salt Lake has been so organized. So those rare moments when Sporting do find themselves with numbers up or at least even numbers, they have to go for it right there. Manya Rodoya did a really good job bringing that ball down and then having that composure, right, to pick out the pass. And Johnny Russell, again, I thought he was going to shoot it himself. But when his first touch took him a little bit too far wide, he was able to deliver a great ball to the back post. But Sporting have to make those moments count. It's right there. It's exactly what happens when they do. For Daniel Shallowy, his fifth goal on the season. For Johnny Russell, his second assist on the season. And it's interesting, Jacob, because I had just mentioned how Johnny Russell and Daniel Shallowy had swapped flanks. We're used to seeing both of them play more as inverted wingers. Shallowy, a right-footed player on the left-hand side. Russell, a left-footed player on the right-hand side. But because Russell was on the left side, 
that set him up for his preferred left foot to put that service across to Shallowy. And because Shallowy, the right-footed player, was on the right-hand side, it set him up perfectly for a right-footed finish, which, by the way, he placed just inside that near post to beat the goalkeeper. It was an excellent finish. Soccer is a funny game, right? It, those two got switched, not from a tactical adjustment, just from a set piece. Ball didn't go out of play, so they just stayed over there. And in the end, worked out well for Sporting. It's Johnny Russell's back on the ball. Great over-the-shoulder flick from Tommy. Russell tries to drive it in with a right foot. It's over the head of Shallowy, but Polito tracks it down in front of the near touchline and plays it back to Voltaire. A little cheeky pass from Eric Tommy. He just flicked the ball right over his shoulder. And it sent Johnny Russell down that right-hand side. Palacio leaves one on Polito after he had gotten rid of the ball. The referee will allow Sporting Kansas City to play on. We're in the 34th minute with Sporting leaning at 1-0 on the goal by Daniel Shallowy. It's funny, Nate. In those initial... Five minutes leading up to that goal, RSL had 88% of the ball. And yet, it was in that moment that Sporting were able to capitalize on an error, really, from Gavin Beavers. But there was still a bunch to do for Rejoya, for Russell, and for Shallowy. Starting the season, just looking anemic in the attack, Sporting KC, once they got their full complement of players have been so much better offensively going forward. Daniel Shallowy plays it all the way from the left side of the field across to Jake Davis, who chests it down and plays it to Eric Tommy. Now back to Rosero. Eric Tommy told me before the game, the team that scores first will win this game. We will see if he was prophetic in his... Uh, prediction there. Certainly Sporting will hope that is the case. Voltaire driving diagonally through the center circle sends it right hand side to Jake Davis. Now to Tommy in the penalty area. He cuts it across to Johnny Russell with a turn and a finish that is absolutely top drawer. Johnny Russell doubles the advantage for Sporting Kansas City. He put that sucker right into the roof. The dynamic duo of Daniel Shallowy and Johnny Russell have made it Sporting Kansas City 2, Real Salt Lake nil in the blink of an eye. It is crazy how similar this is to the Vancouver game, last home game for Sporting KC. Remy Voltaire scored in the 33rd minute in that one. They scored another one in the 45th here. Daniel Shallowy gets the first. Johnny Russell, excellent bit of skill. Composure in the box is able to set up. Justin Glads shifts it onto his right foot. We don't see Johnny Russell score many with his right foot, but what a finish that was. Great patient buildup, too, from Jake Davis, from Eric Tommy. What a span of, what, three minutes here for Sporting. That is completely turn this game on its head. It's the first time this season that Johnny Russell and Daniel Shallowy have hit pay dirt in the same game. The captain, Johnny Russell, shouting encouragement to his teammates not to let their foot off the gas. They had two leads this weekend in Houston and let them both disappear late in the first half and late in regulation to settle for just one point. He doesn't want that to happen here today. But Johnny Russell, with his third goal on the season, he's also got an assist today. And it was interesting, Jacob, because in the build-up to that play, when Tommy put that ball across the penalty area, Allen Polito looked to be arriving on a late run. Had Russell let it run through, I think both of us were kind of thinking, if he does let it through, Polito's going to smash it home. Russell, though, stops the ball with a perfect little turn on Justin Glad and finishes with a plum and sporting have a 2-0 lead. Absolutely. You nailed it. When Johnny Russell initially stopped that ball, I was thinking, oh, he's got to let that one run through for Polito, who's wide open. 
Johnny Russell did so well to spin out of that, to shift the ball over to his right foot. Beat, we said, one of the best center backs in the league, and Justin Glad there. What a play overall from Sporting, and it really has come out of nowhere. Now it's going to be a tough battle for RSL to get back into this one. We're into the 39th minute now, and RSL are bringing it into the attacking half. And again, a heavily rotated RSL squad. Eight changes that Pablo Mastroeni made to the team that got a resounding 4 0 win at home against Orlando over the weekend. So, Sporting KC felt that a good start was important. And so far, a good start they have. In possession once again, it's libeled across the halfway line now. And that second goal important for Sporting because Sporting's record this year when scoring just one goal, they don't have a win yet this year, 0-4-2. When they score exactly two goals, they're 2-0-2. Undefeated when they score two or more goals. So important, which we talked about, hey, is that a good thing or not? Because the the fall and when the temperatures cool off, you're going to have to be able to grind out some one-goal games, but... Right now, Sporting don't have to worry about that. Long diagonal ball from Rosero that's overhit. And out for an RSL throw. Pablo Mastroeni, the 46-year-old head coach for RSL. He replaced Freddie Juarez on the job a couple years ago. And all of a sudden, with the new ownership and an influx of spending... There is a level of optimism arising around the RSL side for the first time in in quite some time. These are two teams that you go back to the early teens of this millennium. Of course, MLS Cup final here on the coldest game at the time in MLS history in 2013, maybe being the height of the rivalry at that point in time. Here's a ball up the right-hand side. Jake Davis plays it back to Polito outside of the penalty area with Marcelo Silva right in front of him. Gets it to Johnny Russell. He's looking for a run up the far side to Leibold. It's headed away, but Leibold tracks it down. Now faces up on the defense. Rolls it back to Voltaire. It was a tough pass for Voltaire. Did really well to spin out of the challenge from Loffelson and then maybe feeling himself a little bit with a back heel flick to Tommy. Now Tommy again. He's got two defenders in front of him. He goes to ground and earns the foul. Musovsky might have gotten duped into that one a little bit. Tommy set him up and ends up with what will be a dangerous set piece for Sporting KC, maybe about 35 yards from goal. Goals change games, and it's so cliche, but Sporting really through the first 30 minutes were just kind of going through the motions almost. Since that goal from Daniel Shallowy, It's a completely different team, playing with flair, playing on the front foot, trying to make things happen. Right here is a great opportunity. Eric Tommy to whip this one in. Again, test the young goalkeeper who's got to be rattled giving up those two goals. Tommy and Russell behind it. Tommy hits it with the right foot. Looked like he was trying to bend it towards that far post but didn't get enough bend on it, and it goes into the supporter section for a goal kick. Now, if you're sporting, you want to step up, you want to keep the pressure on. Don't let Salt Lake get back into this game at all before half. And RSL looking to play out of the back against that high press from sporting. Rosero had an interception but lost it, then takes down Oviedo, and it was a smart tackle by Rosero because if he doesn't get the man, RSL would have been off, and sporting Kansas City would have been unbalanced in the back. Instead, they've got to restart at RSL, and they play it across the back line. Sporting are able to organize defensively. Musovsky dispossessed by Fontas. Russell with it. He sees the run of Eric Tommy. Ooh, and he got the pass past Justin Glad, but too far centrally, and Tommy not able to get on the end of it. It goes all the way back to Bieber's, the goalkeeper. That was an opportunity for Tommy to be clear through up the left-hand side. 43rd minute, though, still sporting Kansas City 2, RSL nil. Nifty footwork by Anelli up the right-hand side, now driving centrally. He plays it out wide to Gomez. Gomez running at Leibold, gets around him, 
perpendicular to the 18-yard box. Back to Palacio right in the center of the park. Now Oviedo touches it all the way back to Marcelo Silva. Our side, Brody. Sporting KC spoke a lot this week about the importance of not switching off late at the end of the first half and late at the end of the game. They're in that area right now into the 44th minute, and here comes Loffelson forward after a giveaway. He tries his luck from 20 yards away, and his pass goes scooting wide of McIntosh's right-hand side, and it's out for a goal kick. Really? Casper Loffelson did a good job at winning that ball. But if you're sporting, you're glad that he takes that shot because he had some other options, some better options with Krylak and Musowski up there making good runs off the ball. They had numbers up. You mentioned the importance of holding on to these leads. Down in Houston, sporting obviously blew two leads and both of those in stoppage time in the first half and in the second half. Sporting have to get into this locker room with a zero on that scoreboard for RSL. McIntosh takes the goal kick long as we go into the 45th minute. Now, there will be some stoppage time. Remember, there was a hydration break in the 30th minute. A poor pass for Voltaire ends in a giveaway. Gomez streaking across the halfway line. Plays a slow pass over to Oviedo. And back now to Gomez. Closed down by Radoya who wins it in the center circle. His pass was a little overcooked for Shallow. You asked to head over to the right-hand side to corral it. Now he's got it running right at the RSL defense. Into the penalty area. Across for Polito, who got on the end of it with his left foot, but could not quite direct it on frame, and it goes out for a goal kick. But Polito applauding the service from Daniel Shallowy up the right-hand side again. Started with Rodoya. Great win in midfield, and this is what... Want to see more Daniel Shallow when when he is aggressive and when he is running at the back lines, whether it's on the left or the right, he's so dangerous. Sometimes Daniel can get in those moments where he has an opportunity, but then he recycles the ball and wants to keep possession. He's so good when he is direct and runs at the back line. Love that ball to Polito in the end. Into stoppage time now. The fourth referee indicates at least two minutes of stoppage time to close out half number one. So, again, this is that area where Sporting KC have really emphasized this week that they cannot have any lapses in concentration. They want to get to the locker room with this 2-0 lead. They knock it around the back this time. As RSL set up shop close to the halfway line. Polito checking in to the halfway line, and it turns between three different RSL defenders. It was a great turn at first, but then he ran out of real estate and loses it to Anelli. And here comes Gomez. He's closed down immediately by Johnny Russell. You don't like the giveaway by Polito if you're Peter Vermees, but the reaction by his teammates to win it back for Sporting or at least get the throw-in out of it was on point. It was, but it was a tough spot for Polito. For me, yeah. I don't like that up ball at all. That entry ball in there, those type of balls almost invite Salt Lake to go press. And then your center backs are split. It makes it difficult. Giveaway by Glad, taken by Polito. Centrally to Tommy. Now out to Polito. Edge of the penalty area. Into the area he goes, turning onto his right foot. Looked like Polito got caught between two mines there, and he gives it away as RSL have it back now. With maybe a half a minute or so left of this stoppage time to close out the first half. We're really excited. We're going to have a special guest on at halftime, Bob Kendrick from the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, a one of the crown jewels of Kansas City. will be joining us at halftime to talk about a collaboration between Sporting Kansas City and the Negro Leagues Museum as the halftime whistle has sounded and Sporting Kansas City will feel great about things as they go into the locker room to enjoy some air conditioning and a 2-0 lead that they have, courtesy of Daniel Shallowy striking in the 30th minute on the assist from Johnny Russell, and then Russell doubling the lead on a goal in the 36th minute, courtesy of an assist from Eric Tommy. That is our score at the break. Sporting Kansas City 2, Real Salt Lake nil. Our halftime coverage from Children's Mercy Park is coming up next. 
Sports Radio 810 WHB. Technology moves fast. I need to move faster. WGU's competency-based education puts me in control of how fast I move through my IT degree program. I can accelerate my program by applying what I already know to my courses and focusing on the things I need to learn. Earn a respected, accredited degree that propels your career in the IT field. Learn more at www.wgu.edu slash University of You. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Kind of like choosing Derek Jeter as the pinch hitter for your baseball team. Jeter, you're in. We need a home run. I'll give it a try. I've swung a bat once or twice. That's out of here. Yep, even easier than that. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, is it even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. Capital One and a member FDIC. People falling flat. Do you avoid stare? Arango plays the ball through up the right-hand side, and the ball is placed calmly into the back of the net for RSL. And just like that, they have pulled one back here. Danny Musoski on the beautiful service from Chicho Arango. And it's 2-1. Musoski seemed to be a little muted in his celebration, wondering if the offside flag was going to come up. It did not, and just like that, RSL are right back into this game, and they left Children's Mercy Park in stunned silence. The two substitutes, Ruiz to Chicho Arango. Great little layoff. Soski, one of the fastest players in Major League Soccer. Great finish. But, Nate, this is a trend for sporting. The start of the second half, they are not ready to play coming out from halftime. And it has been the last five games, they always... in the 30th minute, Russell in the 36th. So RSL down two goals. But if they get one, we all know the psychology and everything changes. Yeah, and I think they got we'll to see who's coming off. I, I wondered if they're going to be careful with Palacio's minutes here because he's played a full season. I wondered if he's going to kind of be spotted throughout July and August, kind of, you know, playing 20 here, 45 there. Yeah, he has come off, you know, basically playing full season. So, I mean, not much of a break for him transitioning straight into RSL. So, so Chicho, game, game Chicho for Demir because Masovsky's still in. Yep. And then I think um, Gomez is coming out and Jasper's coming out. I thought it'd be Oviedo to give kind of, you know, Gomez on that right side a little, keep the kind of pace and attacking presence with him. Polito greets Chicho Arago in the center circle. Arcel's going to move from right to left in the second half. It's getting dark in Kansas City now. Maybe a little cooler. But, man, that game moved pretty slowly late in the first half. The heat was clearly taking its toll despite that water break at the half-hour mark right after Shallowy scored the game's first goal. Yeah, I felt the majority of that first half was just both teams kind of just sitting in, allowing the other team to have possession not allowing counterattacks or looking for the counterattack. And it was just kind of a stagnant half, really three 
main opportunities, and Kansas City capitalized on two of them, and RSL had Oviedo hit it off the bar and a good long effort from Palacio. So Diego Luna for Andres Gomez, Pablo Ruiz for Jasper Lavelson, Chicho Arango for Demir Krylock. Three subs for RSL at halftime. Pablo Mastroni has two more to go. Still 82 degrees. RSL with the ball. They can play a long ball ahead to Chicho. To Masatsky in behind. Masatsky around the keeper. And RSL scores right out of the locker room. 46th minute. They pull one back. 2-1. Game on. And we'll have to see if it's offside, but Masatsky's kind of looking and yeah, it looks like it's a goal, but again, it's just a, I think a Pablo Ruiz started this one, pings the ball forward to Chicho Rongo, who finds space. Yes, he does. He brings it down. Musovsky with a great run with him. This is what I was talking about in the first half. There wasn't connection with Musovsky and Demir Krila, and then a great ball from Rongo into Musovsky, just staying on side, and he chips it over. McClintosh, as he comes out, great finish from Musovsky as his confidence continues to soar. McIntosh went to ground, and Masatsky just popped it over him, and it settled into the back of the net. And just like that, the check is complete. The goal is good. It is a 2-1 game. Masatsky has his fifth goal. Assists. Ruiz deserves the hockey assist for that. We'll see if they give it to him. That is a really good ball. That should be his sixth assist in MLS. Attack on a couple more in the Open Cup. And Chicho Rango will pick up his first assist. What a start for RSL. It is 2-1, and they are right back in it. RSL is not Kansas City. Knocks it over the top. RSL plays it back towards midfield. Back in possession. Ruiz in the center circle. They're going to play it back to Glad. That was electric out of the locker room. Yeah, I mean, first 40 seconds of the half, Kansas City comes down, turnover, and a ball straight up the field, and two touches and a finish. Uh, just gr- the best opening for the second half after that first half. Pablo Mastroni has preached over and over, play direct, play direct, be aggressive. And RSL was very cautious on the ball in the first half. There were a couple attempts to play it over the top, a handful, but not very many, right out of the locker room. Two aggressive passes straight up field and a goal. 48th minute now, RSL possession, in possession, deep in their own end. Going to play a ball long over the top. Nobody there to win it for RSL. Masoski didn't really seem to react to it. Kansas City in possession. They're going to bring it to the near side. They can play it all the way back to their goalkeeper, McIntosh, under a little bit of pressure from Masoski. He sends a ball up the left side towards Shallowy. Shallow and a Mechanella. Neither guy can get it. Ball really carrying. Anelli tracks it down, sends it back to the keeper, Beavers. He bangs it up towards midfield and a foul on Chicho Arango. All right, Paulo Ruiz, I think, just Ruiz. getting into the back as he was trying to track back in the center of the park. Sporting Kansas City in possession, attacking up the left side, and Leibold tries to play the ball out right to the sideline and knocks it out, so throw in for RSL. And they're deep in their own end now. Justin Glad, not going to mess around, sends the ball up to midfield towards Diego Luna, trying to hold it up, and back into the center circle. Or was that Chicho? That was Chicho over there. He tried to play it to Luna in the center circle, but Sporting Kansas City has it. They'll play it back to their goalkeeper. Masovsky doing a lot of running now. It'll be interesting to see how long he can go. Anderson Julio's speed off the bench late when everyone's tired can be useful. That's another potential sub out there for RSL. They've used three. They have two to go. Brody with the ball for RSL in possession. Ahead to Luna. Luna into the center of the park. Chicharrega has a little space. Starts right. Goes left. Shoot. Shot saved, rebound, cleared by Sporting and out for a throw-in. As Chicho Arango put that on frame from 25 yards out straight away. Yeah, that's what you like from a number nine, too. There's not many options for him as he had it in the center of the park. Couldn't go out wide. The gap kind of closed on him. So just take a touch and rip it, force the goalkeeper into a save. Brody, the throw into Masovsky. Masovsky on the edge of the 18 near the end line. Back to Brody in the corner. Brody out to Palacio. He bends the ball towards the far post. Oh, an attempt at the bike. The ball. Headed out, and Oviedo threw himself out in the air. He gets clipped, goes to the ground. It should be a corner for RSL. 
And good work from Oviedo, too, pulling out of that one. As he saw, he was about to hit the Kansas City player, and he ends up picking the corner kick out of it instead of picking up the foul. RSL scored in the first half twice on corner kicks on the weekend. And the win over Orlando. Chicho Arango scored the first one. Justin Glad the second. Pablo Luis had the assist on both. He has an in-swinger here, and Kansas City heads it away. Back out towards Pablo. Can he win the race to the ball? No, Johnny Russell has it for sporting. Takes it to the sideline, then rips the ball 35 yards up the sideline, knocks it across midfield. RSL has it, and the center backs will retreat, and Justin Glad in possession in midfield. And you're just seeing the difference with a little bit of work rate through the center of the park with Pablo Ruiz and also the effort from Diego Luna and the two forwards just checking back in, working good. Uh, off each other, you're seeing just RSL having the option of opening Kansas City up more in the attacking third. It's just a difference with the, these three that have come on in the second half. RSL in possession. They've retreated all the way to their own 18. Glad on the corner of the box, far side to Beavers. Beavers back to Glad. Beavers has sat five of the last six games. He had a good run of play earlier with McMath hurt. He played quite well. But he's only started once in the last six, the draw in Minnesota. Here's a ball given away in the middle of the park by RSL. Great reaction by Pablo Ruiz to win it back. Wow, that looked a lot like the giveaway that led to the second KC goal. Ruiz sends it out wide. It's Brody charging forward. Brody to Oviedo to Chicho Arango, zigging back towards the top of the 18. He plays a square ball to Luna. It is knocked away by Sporting. Held in, though, by Emeka and Ellie. To Diego Luna on the corner of the 18, far side. Now a shot from distance, saved, headed for the far post. Corner coming for RSL as McIntosh goes down to his left. Pablo Ruiz pulling the trigger from 25 yards, and he had it on frame. Yeah, he showed a stat in the first half, too. RSL has the, the most shots from distance in the league, 19.6. Pablo's going to add to it, but that's what you want from him. And that distance, great effort, and it's a phenomenal save from Mac McIntosh at the near post as it was bending the, in right into the inside. The ball swerved. It started outside and then bent back yeah. and was going to tuck right inside the post if it, McIntosh doesn't make a great save. Here's the corner. Header at the top of the six by Chicho Arango. And again, down to his left, McIntosh makes the save. Not a lot of pace on that, but it was on frame. And Pablo's doing much better with these balls into the box, just floating it right on top of the six and letting the guys go and fight for it. Chicho Arango, so strong, gets a, a, up and above R R Rosso and, and just, but just can't put it on fame. Good work by Rosario to yeah. hold his ground and really keep Chicho from putting any real heat on that ball. They kind of floated in there and made it a little easier to save for McIntosh. Kansas City with the ball in possession in their own half, 54th minute, leading 2-1. to one. They're going to attack up the far side, get to midfield. RSL closing down with numbers. They're going to switch the point of attack. Try to slide a ball down the right side, cleared out by RSL, but right back to Rodoya. Now Rodoya, oh, he holds up his hand as he plays that ball centrally and just gives it to Pablo Ruiz. RSL will attack across midfield. Misovsky has it. In the attacking half, takes it out to the far sideline. Back to Emeka Anelli, right at midfield. And Anelli's going to play it back to Glad as Kansas City gets organized behind the ball. Palacio to Ruiz. Ruiz to Silva. Silva in his own half. Plays a 30-yard ball ahead to Brody near sideline. Brody's got nowhere to go, though. Starts towards the middle of the park, sends it back to midfield. Palacio lunging awkwardly at that ball. Got a piece of it, and RSL keeps possession. And Palacio looks at Brody like, what was that? RSL in possession. Brody to Palacio. Palacio under pressure. Back to Brody. Brody at midfield near sideline. Back into his own half to Silva. We're going to switch the ball over to the far side. RSL attacking right to left. Up the sideline. From Mecca and Ellie. Back to Diego Luna. 40 yards away from goal. Centrally to Palacio, back to Luna. Luna under pressure, spins away, 1v2, loses the ball, and here comes Sporting Kansas City. Polito holds up. Polito needs someone to make a run. Polito swarmed by yellow jerseys. Luna gets a touch but can't control it. KC in control. They'll play it to the near sideline, relieve the pressure. Long run forward for the right back, Davis. Pulls up 10 yards across midfield. Sends it back into his own half. 
56th minute, RSL scoring in the opening minute of the second half to get back in this game, but still down 2-1. to one. Kansas City, simple possession in their own half. RSL made the triple sub at halftime. Kansas City has not made a sub yet. they got their starting 11 out there, and Peter Vermes, the head coach, has all five subs at his disposal. Long ball down the left side. And the flag is up there offside. That was Leibold, the left back, with an overlapping run, and he got a little too deep, and he was offside. And now here comes Sporting Kansas City with their first substitutions of the game. Looks like it's going to be a double sub for them. Donis coming in, along with Garikinda. Johnny Russell coming off. And Tommy, Tommy's day is done. Tommy with the assist on the second goal. And Russell scored the second goal. So fresh legs on the right side for Sporting Kansas City. 57th minute. That's shown us from uh, Cyprus. No goals on the season, only the one assist. Chicho with the ball for RSL as they get into the attacking third. He's out on the near sideline. He'll play it back to Palacio. He lost the ball into the 18, headed but straight up in the air, and RSL can't control it, and Sporting clears it. Out to Polito. Polito just short of midfield. Polito clipped, and RSL wins the ball back. turned right away. If you need help completing your paperwork, contact your county Human Services Department. Don't risk a gap in your health coverage. Learn more at KeepCOCovered.com.
Altitude Sports Radio. This is the Colorado Rapids Post Game Show on the Altitude Radio Network. Colorado Rapids brought to you by American Family Insurance. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. Welcome to your Rapids Post Game Show along with Mark Springer, Mark Burton, Ellie Cabrera Live. From the MLS Tonight studios here in Mile High City, as tonight the Rapids and the Timbers play to a scoreless draw in the uh, second half of the game that was postponed on July the 4th. So the Rapids get a point in this one with the nil nil draw. Uh, the two other finals in MLS right now FC Cincinnati beat the New York Red Bulls uh, two to one. They got a stoppage time winner, did uh, Cincinnati. The uh, New England Revolution with a 2-1 victory over Atlanta United. The Chicago Fire currently have a 2-0 lead over Montreal. The Houston Dynamo, who will be in town on Saturday to face Rapids, trail Minnesota 2-0 there at Shell Energy Stadium. The Philadelphia Union on top of Nashville 1-0 in minute number 61. In minute number 65, Sporting KC has a 2-1 advantage over Real Salt Lake. And later tonight, LAFC hosts St. Louis City. The Quakes take on the Sounders in San Jose. And the Vancouver Whitecaps face Austin FC. In our game, the Rapids and Timbers scoreless draw this evening at Dick Sporting's Park. Nil-nil between the two teams. We'll continue with your Rapids postgame show after a break right here on the Altitude Radio Network. Colorado Rapids Soccer on the Altitude Radio Network. If you have Health First Colorado, Colorado's Medicaid program, or Child Health Plan Plus, also known as CHIP, eligibility reviews are resuming. Have you changed your phone number or email address in the last three years? Have you moved? It's important we're able to reach you. Go to keepcocovered.com to learn how to update your contact information. Get notified when it's your time to renew by updating your communication preferences. Some members will be automatically renewed. Others will receive renewal paperwork that must be completed, signed, and returned right away. If you need help completing your paperwork, contact your county human services department. Don't risk a gap in your health coverage. Learn more at keepcocovered.com. Brought to you by the Department of Healthcare Policy and Financing and the Colorado Broadcasters Association. Right now at Wendy's, when you buy either a Dave's Single, Spicy Chicken Sandwich, Medium Frosty, or 10-Piece Nuggets, you can get another for just a buck. Your dollar never tasted so good. So it's obvious what everyone will get, right? Ooh, definitely not. Spicy and Chicken a Sandwich, Dave's Dave Single, Single, and a Frosty for frosty me. Frosty and a Frosty. Okay, who said Frosty and a Frosty? Pick your obvious choice. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Buy One, Get One for a Buck. Limited time only. Price of participation may vary. The U.S. Wendy's valid for item of equal or lesser value. Cannot be combined in a combo or any other offer. This is the Colorado Rapids Post Game Show on the Altitude Radio Network. Join the Colorado Rapids this Saturday, July 15th at Dick Sporting's Park as they take on the Houston Dynamo and celebrate Military Appreciation Night. The Colorado Rapids look forward to dedicating this game to honoring the men and women who serve or have served in the armed forces. Tickets are on sale now at coloradorapids.com. Welcome back to the post-game show. It's tonight, the Rapids and Timbers end in a scoreless draw. So both teams come away with a point. Over in the Gold Cup, uh, the U.S. men's team in Panama, is a, they're, they're playing a barn burner right now. It was nil-nil after 90, so they went to extra time. Panama scored early in the extra time. They scored in minute number 99 to go up 1-0. But Jesus Ferrer came back and tied the game up just six minutes later. So right now, they're a minute 115. It is 1-1 between the U.S. and Panama. The winner of this game goes on to the championship game. In the Gold Cup, they will face the winner of the late game tonight in the Gold Cup, Jamaica and uh, Mexico will go head-to-head. In the NBA Summer League, the Nuggets 
Uh, summer league game was supposed to tip off 30 minutes ago, but it has not got underway because the game before it, Knicks and Magic went into overtime, and it just ended momentarily. The Knicks won that in overtime, 82-80, but the Nuggets are about to take on the Utah Jazz there in Vegas in some summer league action. But in our game, the Cabo Rapids and the Portland Timbers end in a scoreless draw. We'll continue after a break right here on the Altitude Radio Network. Colorado Rapids Soccer on the Altitude Radio Network. It's not too late to get the ultimate summer comfort package from Ultimate Heating, Cooling, Plumbing, and Electric. Hey, Scott Hastings here. And right now, when you purchase any new AC system, Ultimate will also install free indoor air quality products worth up to $1,600. The free filtration system is the ultimate in protection from airborne pathogens, bacteria, viruses, and mold. And the pure air keeps your new AC running better longer. It's the ultimate summer comfort package called Ultimate Heating and Cooling dot com to get it before it's too late offer ends july 31st if you have health first colorado colorado's medicaid program or child health plan plus also known as chip eligibility reviews are resuming have you changed your phone number or email address in the last three years have you moved it's important we're able to reach you go to keepcocovered.com to learn how to update your contact information Get notified when it's your time to renew by updating your communication preferences. Some members will be automatically renewed. Others will receive renewal paperwork that must be completed, signed, and returned right away. If you need help completing your paperwork, contact your county human services department. Don't risk a gap in your health coverage. Learn more at keepcocovered.com. Brought to you by the Department of Healthcare Policy and Financing and the Colorado Broadcasters Association. This is the Colorado Rapids Post Game Show on the Altitude Radio Network. Welcome back as we wrap up your Colorado Rapids Post Game Show. Rapids and Timbers scoreless draw tonight there at Dick Sportius Park as uh, they played the second half of the game that they started on July 4th. So the stats... After with with the with the July fourth and tonight combined look like this possession percentage Colorado had fifty six point six percent of the possession Timbers with forty three point four shots the Rapids had twelve total shots one of which was on goal the Timbers nine total shots two of which were on goal four block shots for the Rapids three for the Timbers and the pack, passing accuracy eighty percent for Colorado seventy three. For Portland, but each team with a point as uh, the Rapids and Timbers finish with a scoreless draw tonight. And that is it. That's the whole enchilada. That is our broadcast. We want to thank everyone who made it possible. Starting with the man here in the studio is me, hold it down, the radio machine, Mark Springer, and out at Dick Sporting's Park, Jesse Trio doing that engineering thing. Our next broadcast is Saturday night as the Rapids host the Houston Dynamo. Broadcast time is 7 o'clock. Once again, the final, Colorado nil, Portland nil for Connor Cape, Brian Crook, and Mark Bernalis. And thanks a lot for listening. Have a good night, everybody. We'll talk to you on Saturday right here on the Altitude Radio Network. You've been listening to the Colorado Rapids Post Game Show with Mark Bertinoli. Network producers are Jesse Trujillo, Alan Baca, Steve Nelson, Mark Springer, Jordan Berg, Dan Tanner, and Cole Smith. Network creative director is Marky Lindemolder. Network production director is Steve Cassidy. Traffic directors are Megan Rose and Tip Tanty One Gumpai. Network sales manager is Dan Stores. Network director is Kevin Shockey. Chief network engineer is Jason Goradetzer. Senior vice president of the Altitude Radio Network is is Dave Fleck. This broadcast was a presentation of Major League Soccer and the Altitude Radio Network. Altitude Sports Radio, the station for all Denver sports. We now join our previously scheduled program already in progress. 
Yeah, but, well, of course, why would you want to leave when you got him? I can I just I want to say this about Wimbayama. I was one of the people after the first game. Um, you know, I'm not going to say he's a bust or anything like that. Obviously, he had flashes. You could. It's hard to say. You know, when when you see him in a summer league game. But, you know, there are cer- certain things you could take away from that. And the fact that you were telling me that he was Tom Brady, not you particularly, but that he was Tom it Brady. certainly wasn't me because yeah. I'm on and, the other end. I go, and I want to see the long – I'm not hot right. take guy, Arnie. Right. Well, though, it was that. the best thing in, in, in what the – it'll be the best thing in team sports, I think is what Woj said or something. No, there's well, a, lot, a lot of folks that are throwing yeah, well, out those lines. Completely, completely wrong, 100%. Might not even win rookie of the year. You could tell that from one summer league game. So, again, not – to say he's a bust or anything, and he certainly did bounce back in the second game. But it's it, the summer league game is a big different game compared to the NBA. And as for what he said about it, the NBA not being physical as, as it is in France out there, I take that personally, Mike. I don't know. It's like it's like you're taking a shot against the, the USA. Oh, look at you! Team. You're making yeah. it a uh, no, I, 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 an I, international I, incident. No, no. I, well, look I at maybe, you escalating I this. I get, but I take I mean, it let's personally. Let's send the president out to talk about this. That's Come like on. Me, that's like me coming up to Mike Tyson and said, "Yeah, I can take a punch from you." Well, well oh, I mean, you a can, lot, huh? lot, lot of guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yo, know, that's true. That's, tried that. That's true too. Once but... upon a time, old Mike might have <laughs> might have let. For Chicho Arango inside the 18. RSL getting ready to make the fifth and final substitution. Ojeda is getting ready to come in. See if he's coming on maybe for Nelson Palacio here in the 75th minute. Like for like. Kansas City in possession. Into the attacking half. Up the left side. Along the sideline. RSL organized though. Over there closing down with numbers. And McAnally gets a touch but can't maintain possession. And it trickles out for a Sporting KC throw in. 35 yards from the corner flag, far sideline. Ojedo getting last-minute instructions from Pablo. Now he wants him to stay in that two pivot. And now a foul as the Sporting attacks up the far sideline. And they are going to get a free kick in a dangerous spot. There was a lot of traffic over there. Two Sporting KC players, three RSL players. Hard to see what happened as shallow he hit the ground and he's still down. But he draws the foul, and the angle's so sharp, it's going to be hard to go for goal. But, boy, a right-footed in-swinger here with everyone crashing in on the goalkeeper can be a nervy moment. And you just don't want to give Kansas City set pieces. You know, they haven't really been able to break down RSL too much right around that 18. They've had a couple times they've broken through. But RSL's been pretty comfortable keeping them outside. But set pieces are just totally different. Kim is going to take this, and the ball's maybe four or five yards from the sideline on the far side. Two-man wall. He's about 20 yards from the corner flag. He whips a ball in, popped up, still up. Keeper hits the ground. RSL heads it away. Johnny's out to maintain possession. RSL out to defend, and I think it's Chicho Arango who knocks it away, and Kinda's going to take a corner for Sporting KC, but that was a good time to concede a corner. Uh, and, he looked, and Fontas ended up getting this ball first, but he kind of turtlenecked it and, and didn't put his head all the way into it, and it pops up. There's a ball on the corner to shallow at the top of the six, and he heads it up into the crowd. And every moment for RSL coming off the set piece, and then corner kick too, shallow on the backside, just kind of swiping at this one as Kinda plays it quickly. And whips that one through to Shallowy on the back post. Nobody for RSL ah, jumps. Oviedo just holding on to yeah. him. He had a free jump at that one. Yep. And we're going to have a hydration break here in the 77th minute. Both teams headed to the bench for water. The temperature, the humidity, both very high. It was still 82 degrees and humid when the second half started. So it was pretty much a given we were going to get this second break. They only attacked on two minutes at the end of the half. I thought with the two goals and the hydration break, there'd be at least three, maybe four. 
but it was only two. We'll see at the end of this one with a 2-2, how many minutes will they tack on? Since the World Cup, some people say they've been more aggressive with stoppage time. I think they've been much more realistic. I, I think it's realistic. It's not aggressive because there's tons of times where, like, it should be Yellow seven. cards, it substitutions, and goals. And it's three. Yeah. You know, and then I think the World Cup kind of exposed it, you know, when you're starting to see nine, ten uh, consistently through the World Cup games. And, uh, you know, now we're starting to see that trend continue on, which I think is is right. Peter Vermes is barking at his team he is all sorts of fired up which it's pretty much been peter vermes for 15 years he's a guy that you don't you know if you're having a poor performance you don't want to see him come into the locker room (laughs) he had a tremendous playing career 88 olympics 1990 world cup 66 caps for the united states three u.s open cups and an mls cup as the head coach since 2009 and famously got that MLS Cup by beating RSL on penalties, a marathon penalty shootout in Kansas City on a frozen field in 2013. A frigid frozen field. Yep. Frigid frozen. <laughs> As opposed to the warm frozen? <laughs> the lukewarm frozen? Yeah, is is, well, is coming on here, and he'll come on for Nelson Palacio, who made his debut, the 22-year-old Colombian international, coming here in the summer transfer window. Couldn't play Saturday. His paperwork wasn't finalized, but everything worked out. So he'll be subbed out here now. 79th minute. We'll see how much time is added on at the end of this one. Palacio's out. Ojeda and Ruiz, who've played a lot together, are in to close this one out as the defensive midfielder for RSL. Long ball, Chicho Arango brings it down, plays it back to Ojeda, gets his first touch. Ball goes into the center circle. Almost won by Sporting. There it is, back to Ojeda. He plays a good ball in for Anderson Julio, but McIntosh, aggressive off his line, out near the top of the 18. He covers up. 80th minute now. Kansas City will go the other way. Game opening up. Ball goes to Polito. Polito sends it down the left side into the attacking half. Sporting on the ball, under pressure from a Meccanelli. They're going to play the ball back into their own half, back across midfield, and they'll regroup. Good job by Meccanelli to shut that down. Yeah, Meccanelli's done a better job staying a little bit further wide so they can't get in behind him. Janice, Janice running in the middle of the field, just throwing himself at Ojeda, and Ojeda gets the foul. And Ojeda says, I pulled up. He ran into me. He's actually laughing at Rubio Vasquez right now. Yeah, and it was a lot of contact, so I suppose he felt like he had to call something. And and really, it's Kinda that's made the big impact off the bench. Uh, Johnny has, has been slow to get into it. Sporting Kansas City attacking. Sporting Kansas City into the 18. Service across the front of the 18. Cleared out by Brody. Well read. Ball comes out. Kinda has it. Kinda 30 yards out, far side. Gives the ball to Polito. Polito pushes it all the way out to the sideline now. Gives it up, but gets it right back. Polito on the ball, 1v2. Polito dispossessed. Polito has Ojeda to take the first touch. Now here comes RSL. Diego Luna headed to space for Chicho Arango. Chicho can't get to it. Here comes Kansas City the other way. It's Voltaire winning it. Voltaire will have a go. Oh, and it's pushed over the bar by Gavin Beavers. He'll give up the corner. That ball might have hit the bar. Beavers took no chance. He shoves it over the bar and up into the crowd. And Arcel had a small opportunity to kind of break out on Kansas City, but Diego Luna tried to play a one-time ball through the center that Chicho Arango couldn't get onto. And then Voltaire just walks us up to the top of the 18. I think it was going over the top, but Beavers has got to be sure. Another corner for Sporting Kansas City. 81st minute. Right-footed in-swinger. Driven in way too low. Scuffed it to Anderson. Julio has it. Oh, he bluffs. Kenda jumps. Anderson Julio dribbles around him. Now he races up the sideline. He's got far more energy than anybody else. Now a play a ball for Diego Luna, but it's over Luna's head and out, and that ends the threat for RSL. Anderson Julio with way more energy than everybody else. Oh, and he, he, he looped on Kenda twice on this one to get around him. Kenda thought it went out of the bounds on the second time, and he's able to walk it forward. Good look to play the big switch to Diego Luna, but he was starting too far to the inside, and he played it up over the top. 82nd minute, 2-2. RSL with a pair of second-half goals to get back in this one. Sporting Kansas City has had both their goals in the first half. Can RSL find a third and complete the comeback? Yeah, it's tough for RSL, too, because they've, they've come back and they're in a draw position on the road. You know, so you got to be careful how far you break out a point you know, because the, you've, got, you've got a point kind of secured right now. And it's a good result. But here comes Sporting attacking up the left side, trying to get in behind. Service sent in, deflected. Beavers keeps it in, pushes it to Glad. Glad sends it up the right side, and RSL's going to have a chance to hit on a counter. 
Here comes RSL. It's 3v4. No, it's 4v5. RSL at midfield. Up the right side for Anderson Julio. He's got Chicho Central. He's got Diego Luna on the far side. Anderson Julio starts left, goes right, stumbles, almost loses the ball, gets it back. Heavy touch, gives it away, sporting on the ball, and they're going to play out of the back. And now they got a chance to go the other way. There really is no midfield. It's like two groups of 10 players playing at each end. And, and that's where that urgency from Anderson. Julio, take it down to the corner and get Chicho on a, a near post run. Kendo on the ball in the attacking half for sporting. Plays over the far sideline. Big switch back to the near side to Jake Davis. Davis plays it centrally. Janice, Janice almost loses the ball, stumbles, stays on the ball, stays away from Diego Luna, plays it back to his center backs in their own half of the field, and they're going to play it all the way back to McIntosh because of pressure from Anderson Julio, who's a one-man wrecking crew. Now three players try to go with him, and there's a soft giveaway at midfield. RSL has it, far sideline, holding the ball up. Over on the far side, it is... Lost. It was almost out, but lost in Sporting Kansas City back in position. They'll bring it central to Polito. Sporting moves into the attacking half. Polito pulls up under pressure. Gives the ball up. Sporting's going to switch sides. Bring it over to Jake Davis. So right back, getting forward. Cut off by Brody. He'll play it back. Dodoye. Back to Davis. Davis drives into the corner of the 18. Lays it off for Janice. He's shot from distance. Just wide. Hit the boards behind the goal and hit the net for a second. I thought it was in, but it was just wide as he tried to beat him at the near post. And couldn't put it on frame. And really, Jake Davies has done a great job for Kansas City in this second half. Pulling out wide. Finds a little space. Drops it off to Janice. He gets it on his left foot. Tries to cut it back with pace to the near post. Just went by by a couple yards. Beavers was in a good position. He it might still have had been it. a tough save yeah. with the pace that he put on it. I doubt Beavers could have caught that, but he could have parried it wide. But this way doesn't give up a corner. It's a goal kick. RSL wins the second ball at midfield. 85th minute, 2-2. You talk about do you gamble for the three or do you play for the one? Nine guys defend, and Chicho and Anderson Julio, with all his energy, try to go get the game winner, and, and, and the other guys stay back. That's the difference is now you have Anderson Julio fresh. You have Chicho Arango, who's only you know been on the field for the second half, so you have so many threats up top. Ojeda and Pablo Ruiz can push forward, but y- y- you don't want to leave here on a counterattack, you know, going down and losing 3-2 when, when you're in a position to get a point. Brody with the ball for RSL, deep in his own end, near sideline, ahead to Diego Luna. Luna away from Davis, back to Brody. Brody into the middle of the park. Brody with a little space, ahead to Luna in space. Here comes RSL into the attacking third, tries to slot a ball forward, and it is under hit. Chicho Arango gets fouled. He is down, but they're not calling anything. He is kicking the ground and holding his ankle. Kansas City wins the ball. They're going the other way. On we play, 86th minute. Kansas City coming forward, but they do not have numbers. It's 4v6. The ball goes out to the far sideline, and it's 1v2 over there. Slide a little ball to Kinda. Kinda can't get to it. Justin Glad gets a touch for RSL and wins it, and RSL head the other way. Chicho Arango still is not up. He is still holding his ankle. Haven't seen a replay yet. It looked like a foul, foul live. Ojeda with the ball in the middle of the park. Hits it with the outside of his right foot and sends it over to the far sideline. RSL briefly into the attacking half. Kansas City with numbers behind the ball. Everybody walking. Ahead to Ojeda into the attacking half. Over to the far sideline. Back into the middle of the park to Ojeda. Ojeda to Brody. Brody to the near side to Luna. Luna 1v1. Heavy touch. Almost loses the ball. Gets around Davis. Gets back on his feet. Dodging, darting. Tries to slot a ball through for Anderson. Julio popped up by a Kansas City defender. I think it was Rosero getting a piece of that. McIntosh has it. Now Luna's down. And McIntosh off his line to grab that. Kansas City jogging forward towards midfield to Davis. Davis ahead to Polito. Polito into the attacking third. Polito gets just dragged down by Pablo Ruiz. And Pablo Ruiz is going to complain, and he's going to see a yellow, and he points at the other end and says, what happened to Chicho? And that doesn't matter right now. Ruiz goes in the book with a yellow card. Nah, it's an easy call, too. Ruiz is on the wrong side of Polito. Polito's t- still taking his space. Just, you know, he does a horse collar, basically. Yeah, he pulls them both back behind. Easy yellow card. He's got nothing to argue. He's trying to argue the Arango foul, but 
You know, that on this matter. play, you just, you just get back into position. He wasn't. He made no play on the ball. No. He had one hand on each shoulder, was dragging Polito to the ground. 87th minute, he sees yellow. So a set piece opportunity for Kansas City. They are taking their time into the 88th minute now. Looks like Kinda is going to take this. In the middle third of the field, a little more towards the near sideline. Pablo Ruiz now got a talking to from Ruben Vasquez. Pablo much calmer. This ball a little more than 30 yards away from goal. Probably midway between the outside of the 18 and the outside of the six-yard box on the near side. Kinda on the restart. Sends it into a mixer, knocked down, second bite at the apple, popped up, still loose. Johnny sends it wide. That ball was pinging around just to the right of the penalty spot, but no one could really get a hold of it as it was bouncing waist high, kind of awkwardly. And there's a replay of Chicho, and it looks like he got fouled. He got fouled pretty hard, too. And that could have been a free kick for RSL straight away. Probably only a yard outside of the 18-yard box. Yeah, Leibold came from the backside of him and, and just kind of clipped through his ankle. And Chicho kind of went off his feet and went down and surprised with the positioning. Yellow card's not reviewable. Yeah. Red cards are, but not yellow. So nothing VR can do about it. They just play on. RSL with a throw in now. Sporting wins the ball. Voltaire holding it in, tries to chip a ball, and it's blocked by Ruiz. Ojeda has it. Ball's still bouncing awkwardly. Ojeda settles it, sends it ahead midfield to Chicho. He pops into the space. Anderson Julio heads it forward. In on keeper. His shot saved by McIntosh. It comes out wide. Anderson Julio collects it near the corner of the 18. Anderson Julio 1v1 for the second time. Finish the first, but not the second. Sporting with numbers behind the ball. Ojeda to Luna. RSL still in the attacking third. They're going to send it over to the far side to a Meccanelli. A Meccanelli to the edge of the 18, into the area. Lays it off. Shot by Luna. Blocked. Comes flying out. RSL bringing it down, sending it back to their center backs. Silva in the center circle. Out to the near side. Along the sideline, it's Brody. Brody on the near sideline. Back to Ojeda. Ojeda back to Silva in the center circle. To Ruiz at the front of the center circle. To the other side, to Glad. Glad walks it forward with a couple touches. Now tries to chip a ball in behind. It is chested down by Sporting in one. Ahead to Polito. Polito trying to hold up. Tackled away by Silva. Straight to Luna. To Anderson Julio. One poor touch back into traffic away from Janice. Maintains possession. Sends it out wide to the far side. Into the 18 now. Here's a ball to Ojeda. Ojeda, poor touch, loses it. It's behind him. Ruiz trying to keep it in. Sporting has it. Now they got numbers going the other way. 5v4. Ruiz trying to get back. Ball sent down the right side to Shallowy. Shallowy into the attacking third for Sporting Kansas City. Into stoppage time. Into the area for Polito. Polito with 10 goals leading Sporting. But Justin Glad turns him away from goal. Forces him outside the 18 on the near side. And Polito will now just have to play a negative pass all the way back to Davis. Davis back to the middle of the park. But the ball now 40 yards from goal. Back to Davis. Davis, moving towards the corner of the 18, tries to slot a ball in behind Brody. Brody gets a touch. He's exhausted. He deflects it out to Polito. Polito to the back post. Header saved by Beavers. What a save. Beavers, 1v1. And a corner. Beavers thinks he kept it in, but they're saying it went out. Polito unmarked on the end line, near side. Lofts a ball over Beavers to the back post. Snap header and Beavers. Pops it in the air and grabs it lying on his back. It hit him in the chest. And Beaver's laying on the ground. He did reach over the line for the ball. He said, like, yeah. And, and Oviedo, a good call. Oviedo and, and Mecca and Nelly were just standing there with a the free header for Kinda. Another corner. Kinda drives it in low. Headed away. Now cleared by RSL. Chested down. Ruiz pings one out into space for Anderson Julio. Julio racing to midfield. It's 2v3. Julio's got Diego Luna with him. Kansas City tracking back. Now it's 3v5. Luna with the ball. Luna hits it out to the near side, and there's nobody there. And that goes out for Kansas City throwing. Clock says 91-30. Four minutes added on at the end of this one, so two and a half to go. My goodness, Gavin Beavers. He's a big guy. And tell the keeper, make yourself big. You're 6'4", 183. He just jumped up and... 
ended up saving that with his chest. And, and you saw kind of, if you when you watch the replay, it's slow. He does a great job as the ball's played over the top of him. He shifts his vision to the player that's about to. Brody with the ball. Brody in the attacking half to Chicho. Chicho around one defender. Heavy touch. Gets away from a little bit. Second center back comes over and clears it. Held in by RSL to Oviedo. Oviedo. 20 yards from the corner flag. Near side. Back to Brody. Brody to Ruiz in the middle of the field. Ruiz to Ojeda. Ojeda tries to slot a ball through. Takes a heavy deflection into the 18. And McIntosh gets it before it goes out. McIntosh now, 93-30, into the final 30 seconds, getting very close to splitting the points in Kansas City. One last chance for KC to get forward. McIntosh just crushes it. And Justin Glad heads it down. It drops at his feet. He takes one step. He stumbles, loses the ball. Kansas City digs it out. But the ball goes right to a Meccanelli there behind Justin to clean things up to the near side. A ball ahead for Anderson Julio. He pulls up. There's the whistle, and it's all over. Anderson Julio pulls the jersey over his head. He's not thinking about the second goal that tied this game and earned RSL a point. He's taking, thinking about the second breakaway opportunity that was saved that could have been the game winner. But RSL, down two goals at halftime, on the road, rallies. The win streak on the road ends at four in a row. The unbeaten streak goes to 11 in a row. RSL picks up a 34th point on the year. They're unbeaten in the last 11 on the road, unbeaten in the last nine overall, and coming home to face a New York Red Bull team on Saturday night that had a catastrophic collapse oh. at the end at home. They